Hi everyone, this is Pauline Love from Alpha Mag, and today I'm with Lisa Essels, the emblematic director of Goodman Gallery. Good afternoon, Lisa. Hi, Pauline. <laughs> so, Lisa, you took over Goodman Gallery in 2006, and I'd like to remind our audience that uh, Goodman Gallery was founded in 1966 uh, when apartheid was still a harsh reality in South Africa. And it was then the only place where black artists could present their work. Um, you transformed it from a local gallery to a very international one. You participate in art fairs all over the world. And you now represent artists, icons, uh, whose work confronts entrenched power structures and inspires social change. So I was curious about how did you manage to extend the gallery's reach while maintaining this uh, political and social commitment? Okay, so I, I think Pauline, it, it was really sort of clear to me when I took over the gallery um, that I wanted, you know, that I, I really didn't um, think that it was useful to have a stable of artists or a gallery that was just focused in a region, like just South Africa. Or um, So it felt really important to expand on the dialogue because and on the discourse because the human experience no matter where we are from is actually the same and um, it's a global human experience and so um, it just felt like a very natural progression to continue what we stand for and what we're doing but to bring in the experiences and um, you know of artists from all over the world with a particular emphasis on the continent and the global south that are focused on social change and that have an international resonance in terms of the human experience. So whether it's Shireen Nishat, who is um, speaking about art, about the regime and women's rights, um, you know, living in New York, um, or whether it's Hank Willis Thomas, African-American, it all kind of felt like it made sense and it needed to be expanded upon to make the conversation richer and um, really more engaging to a global audience, that we are all the same and we are all sharing a human condition and experience that um, history keeps repeating itself and um, the human condition is, is, is universal. And I believe your focus is artists from the global south. And we have been, we have seen this past year an expanding demand a trend for uh, these artists on the, on the global art market. So how do you see that? I mean, do you think it's great to have this international attention or I don't know? Well, I must say it's wonderful. It's wonderful um, when I, um, you know, kind of similar to what we've just discussed, it just felt that, you know, looking at all these colonial histories and um, power structures, it felt really important to bring emphasis to it by expanding the program to start working with artists from the global south and including that human, disc that, 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 that human experience that, we started the project South South, which has been an ongoing curatorial initiative um, since 2010 with many different iterations. So, yeah, it feels great that, um, you know, perspectives from the global South are now kind of forming part of the, the discourse, which was very much driven from a Western narrative, and that many of the artists from the global South are now being considered and programmed and included in um, the broader conversation. So I think it's fantastic. And uh, it feels like a real, you know, that I at least played a small role in, in contributing to that, made, to making that happen. A small role. Yeah. I don't think so. I think you play like a major part in this, yeah. you know, in shining a spotlight on these artists. Well, that, that's great. And I mean, you know, I think so much more work needs to happen. I mean, I'm very excited about, um, our South-South um, edition that happens in the London Gallery um, next year, which will kind of have a real focus on India and Africa and some of those connections, because I think that that hasn't necessarily been 
teased out as much. I think we kind of spent a lot of time initially looking at the whole Latin American relationship with the continent. So I'm really looking forward to the discourse shifting towards um, towards uh, Asia and India specifically in the next iteration. Yes, that's, that sounds super, super interesting. And yeah. talking about your artist, um, I think your rooster is a very nice blend of emerging names and very established artists such as Shirin Nishad that you were talking about and who I've been very lucky to interview a few weeks uh, ago or uh, Elena Tsui, who pre currently presents this amazing installation at uh, State Modern in London. So how do you, I mean, I know it's a tricky question, but how do you choose the artists you want to work with? Uh, was, is it based on their personality, on their works, on their, uh, what they stand for? I think it's a combination. Um, very many, many of the things in which you, you, which you quite rightly put forward. Um, it's about the work, the process, the way of thinking, the way of being. Um, and um, I've been very, very blessed to work with the most incredible souls that are really focused on, I believe, just changing the world and really making meaning for me and um, for, you know, the gallery. And so it's a real privilege and it's a real honor. And do you have like a a number limit? I think now you have. Um, I don't remember the exact number of artists represented. Somewhere in the forties. Somewhere in the forties, I think. Um, so yeah, what? actually, it's less no. than most big galleries, or you know, we is, you know, it's actually not necessarily um, a huge stable, um, but um, it, it's it's a good size, I think. Um, and I think there's, there's a nice balance between established artists um, and the next generation of artists, which I'm most excited about. Many of them, you know, who I bought into the program, um, you know, 10 years ago, who are really starting to be recognized hugely and having big major moments. So it feels like that next generation of artists from the continent um, are, are coming through now in a in an exciting and inspiring way, like Kapwani Kiawanga, who's got a show on at uh, Saralves and going to represent the Canadian Pavilion in Venice, and, you know, Grada Kilomba, many of the next generation of, of amazing artists, Kutsunai Chirai, Gabriel Goliath, Mishek Masamvu. So there's a nice balance in terms of um, the, the next generation, which is which is exciting. They keep, they, you know, just... It's such a, when I look ahead, we were planning for what next year brings and all the different museum shows that all the artists have. And it's, it's just incredible, you know, really, really exciting. And you are talking about museums. So I take the occasion to shine a spotlight on one you're doing besides being a proper art dealer. I can put it like this. I know that you uh, offer kids um, the possibility to come to your gallery and discover the, the artworks. And I think like your gallery can be seen as a, an educational place. I believe it's great. So can you tell us more about this aspect, this side of your job? Sure, Pauline. So I think it's about context. I mean, you know, there is no art in the education um, system in South Africa. And I think that giving children access to art education is critical for their development. And so I'm very proud of the fact that, um, you know, busloads of kids arrive at the gallery most weeks from different schools. And it's one of the few places where children can come and engage with contemporary art. Um, this felt, it's particularly important in Johannesburg. Um, what's really great is to see that in Cape Town now, with the Norvell Foundation and Zeitz Mocha, that they are running good education programs within the, the, those institutions that, of course, in the last few years have joined and become part of a very vital part of the, the ecosystem and the landscape. But, um, it, yeah, the gallery does sort of function a little bit like a Kunsthaler in a lot of ways and that, you know, it is really a very fundamental part of, um, you know, the gallery's program and, also just in terms of um, for collectors, so running art history courses. You know, we just run our 
I think it's our fourth art history course um, over the last few years, which is a you know quite a forty hours of art history, and um, which has really also been amazing to sort of see about one hundred and fifty yeah. people that are really now playing significant roles within the ecosystem, having all gone through the art history course through the gallery. And um, then, you know, making sure in the previous years or, or they continue to make sure that we bring back big shows of uh, major international artists to South Africa so that um, there is a, a bigger picture around um, a, a global art world and for people to see big major shows like Tavara Strachan, um, you know, this past quarter was very significant for the gallery. I mean, for me, that's, that's how every art dealer should be, like balance between the commercial side and the educational side. So well done. Yeah. And no, it's, 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 it's very important. And I think um, something that I think feeds my soul and I think the team and the staff and we all kind of feel it, it makes it inspiring and exciting to, you know, to be part of the gallery. And you know, it's not just about art fairs and, and, um, and the market. Talking about art fairs, I missed you in Miami. I'm sorry, I was disappointed not to go. But I, um, I didn't go either. I broke my foot, so I was in a moon boot oh. for like seven okay. weeks. So I also okay. didn't go. So I was sad to but, miss it. But maybe we'll see each other in person in New York for Chris. Exactly, and we just opened an office there, so um, which is great. So um, yeah, that that would be good. I look forward to it. Thank you very much, Lisa, for your valuable insights and like helping uh, us knowing more about Goodman Gallery. Thanks so much, Pauline, for your time and for your work. We appreciate it.